Welcome. Today is Thursday, February 16th, and this is a special uh, school meeting. meeting. Uh, last Thursday, we were supposed to have our regular meeting, and we were snowed out. Um, but we felt it was pretty important to talk about the budget today, so we scheduled a special meeting for that. Unfortunately, um, Jeff Thielman couldn't make it. He has a work commitment, and uh, Len Cardin is traveling and can't make it. Um, just as a reminder to the public, we have a public budget meeting on uh, it's on the 2nd of March, um, starting at 6.30. So we welcome uh, people who are interested in asking questions or giving comments to come to that at 6.30 on the 2nd. Um, sorry, yeah, Dr. Allison Abbey. Can I, I just clarify yes, what please. it is on the 2nd? It's the budget hearing, which mm -hmm. is a legally required part of our budgeting process. So mm -hmm. any people can come to any of our meetings and ask sure. questions about the budget, but this is the, the budget hearing, uh, which illegal. we have to. Re okay, great. Thanks. Um, so I wanted to um, comment that one of the things that we were supposed to do at our last meeting was to uh, say goodbye to Diane Johnson, who was our um, uh, CFO earlier, and we had a cake planned and some <laughs> and, 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 and fruit, and unfortunately we can't do that, but I do want to publicly uh, thank her for her years of service um, and her dedication to the district and, um, and say that we wish you luck on your next venture. Um, so we have uh, public participation. I see none. So then, <laughs> really, you sure? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to uh, welcome uh, Jason Levy, who is our AEA rep, um, and uh, and also to say this is going to be a fairly short meeting. So let's get right on to the budget presentation by Dr. Burke. All right. Mm. Thank you. This, again, this was something that we were going to um, present last week. We, m most of the information in this PowerPoint is information. Sorry? The clicker. We wanted to make sure you had it. Just wanted to make sure you had it. Thank you. It's information that the committee is aware of, but I think that since we're going to be having a hearing, um, this would be helpful, I think, as sort of in general comments about. Um, the revenue that we have and expenses we're expecting for the, for the FY18. The entire budget uh, that's being proposed by the superintendent is on our website. So anyone can go there and look up any information you want. I, I think we're finding a few typos as we've gone along and we will be correcting those um, uh, as soon as possible. So as we um, look at one of the things we always do when we, we look at our budget going forward is we want to know really what are our budget priorities. Uh, that informs what we're going to do with, with any additional money that we might um, have by way of whatever source. So in looking at our budget priorities, the first priority is the retention and compensation of our faculty and staff. FY18, by the way, for a lot of people who don't know what the FY18 means, it is the, um, the last, it's the year of June in a, in a school calendar year. So next year is the 17-18 school year, and we will say that the budget for next year is the FY18 budget because the, the school year ends in in 18. So next year is going to be the third and final year of the contract, and we have already begun talking about um, beginning negotiations. Uh, as you know, we're going to be doing some planning work this year, actually more research work um, with regard to the negotiations. Um, what we have done in our multiple in our multiple year um, projections is that uh, two percent has been the increase for all staff, um, both contractual satisfying contracts as well as staff that are not covered by a contract. And the other priority is increased pay for substitute teachers. Um, Arlington is probably it is 
the lowest, I think, in this entire area. Not maybe not, maybe not yeah. the lowest, yeah. not the yeah. lowest, but we are lowest close dirt. to the lowest. Yeah. And one of the challenges we're finding this year, and, and increasing, and last year as well, is that we're having a hard time um, always finding substitutes. And we're thinking that increasing it um, somewhat will make a difference in that. Another budget priority as a, as a category is to address enrollment growth and, and class size mitigation. And every year we are having to add uh, classroom staff as well as all of the so support staff that is um, necessary. And in general, one of the things we have looked at in terms of ratios, once you add a classroom, it's really not a 1.0 FTE, it's more like a 1.6 or 1.8 in terms of all of the other su the supporting uh, staff that's required. Um, we also are going to have in a budget priority is, a, is our two reserve teachers. Um, most likely we already know where those teachers will go, but it would be subject to what happens with enrollment this summer. Another budget priority is support for our high need students. As you're aware, this past year we have seen an increase of um, in excess of $700,000 in out of district costs. Those costs actually um, need to be incorporated for FY18, but even, even more recently we have incurred some other out of district costs, which would be probably uh, putting that number around $800,000. Now, because this is January, actually it's February now, but still about halfway through the year. Uh, one proposal which we will probably want to discuss somewhat is whether we should actually um, set aside a million dollars for any additional um, out of district placements. Because as we found that the, the differential between where we were last February and where we actually ended up this fall was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. We're also looking for two FTE elementary learning specialists, a social worker at the high school, a .5 social worker at the high school, and a .5 social worker at the Addison Middle School. And um, the .5 FTE social worker at Addison is to satisfy uh, contractual obligations. Administrative support is a broad category. I, you heard in December our elementary principals uh, talking about the fact that they've come to a point where they really need some support. And uh, one proposal, of course, would be to have seven element, seven assistant principals in our elementary school, but that's fiscally not possible. So what we're proposing is a more, mod more modest um, expansion there, and that is to have a half-time assistant principal in a, in a few schools and, and possibly giving these schools that do not have um, an assistant principal some extra administrative support. Another, um, another uh, administ administrative addition is the Director of Social Emotional Learning and Guidance. For many years, Arlington had a Director of Guidance and we have not had that position for a number of years. In fact, one of the things you'll see when we get to some charts later on in this presentation, we've seen enrollment growth over a number of years, and we've seen um, increases in staffing in general education and special education. But the one category that has been relatively flat through all of this growth have, has been administration. When we've had administrators who have retired, we haven't filled those positions. So it's, we're, we're, as we have more of a focus on, on uh, social emotional learning in our schools and the culture of our schools, this is a position that we feel is very important. So those are our major, major categories, though there's one that's not on here and that is desk, desktop support. Um, we, as we expand our number of devices that we're supporting and the number of teachers that are using them regularly in the classroom, um, we need another desktop support person and even that really doesn't meet the, the true needs. 
So looking at the budget. So last year, our budget for FY17, the one we're currently in, in total was $63 million. And that comes from three major sources of revenue. One is a town appropriation, which is the main source, grants, and revolving accounts. So these represent fees and reimbursements. And you have in your budget book a list of all of the, all of the ones that we have. They'd be instrumental music, athletic fees, bus fees, any uh, preschool tuitions, all of those are sources of revenue. Now, this year, um, when we're looking at town appropriation going into the FY18, we are, the, our appropriation from the town is matching a formula that has been agreed upon and has been operational for the last couple of years, and that is the operating budget will increase 3.5%, Special education budget will increase 7%. And there's a formula for uh, funding for um, increased enrollment growth. And when we went from last year to this year, we had an increase of 220 students. Um, actually, I was looking back from FY12. From since FY12, I think we've had an increase of well over 700 students, closer to 750 students. So it's a, it's, we've been experiencing tremendous growth over these last few years. So in terms of town appropriation, this represents a 6.6% increase when you combine those various percentages and the, enroll, and the enrollment growth factor. However, that's not the only source of revenue for um, the school system. Another source are grants. And if you look at the grant amount for FY17, it's two point, well, essentially 2.4. And then you look at the assumption for FY18, and that's $2.2 million. There is a, we're expecting a decrease, and in fact, we're fairly certain of this decrease. Primarily, it's in Title I funding. Um, our, our Title I monies that come in actually sort of oscillate between two numbers, and, and it's totally dependent upon what the poverty level is in, in Arlington. And given the latest numbers we have, we're pretty sure that we're going to see a decrease. So that is, that's pretty much of a definite. Um, then in terms of revolving, another a source of the revolving fees and reimbursements one of the major reimbursements is circuit breaker. And what we're going to see next year is a decrease of 185,000. That's because of the process that we have. It's, it's, what, it's what expenses were incurred in a, in a year where there wasn't a lot of growth. And so the circuit breaker number is down. Uh, another another uh, reduction in terms of income here is last year, if you recall, we um, took 250000 from community education and moved it into a one-time cost of curriculum materials. That is, that is no longer um, a, a source of revenue. We are not going to be reducing the community education uh, budget <coughs> this year for that purpose. So in total, for the revolving and reimbursements, we're down about 12.1%. For grants, we're down 6.3%. So when you then combine that with the increase in town revenue, the overall increase is really 5%. And that 5% increase represents about $3.16 million, which is a considerable amount of money until you look at what needs to be covered with that amount of money. So our first priority is the retention and salaries of our staff. And if we were to take everyone that is employed here for level service, all of our teachers, TAs, secretaries, um, support people, um, enroll 
enroll over their salaries next year through the contractual agreements and, and add longevity for those that are now getting longevity or are moving between longevity um, levels, that increase is slightly over $2 million. We also have the assumption that we're going to need a million dollars to address the known out of district expenses we, we, we have, which will be around 800,000. And what we might, and it's some cushion for expect uh, possible increases. All right, so if we were to um, look at that um, and looked at all of our other increases, what we would find if you just took those two numbers together, we're over $3 million. There would not be very much money, probably about 130000 that we would be able to fund beyond these two major categories. So what uh, central staff did is we went through the budget, not quite the same way that you have it here. We went through different categories, for example, teaching assistance. We looked at all the teaching assistance in every single building compared to um, looking at the enrollments, looking at what we have as sort of a formula for te teaching assistance in terms of what everybody, everybody um, gets in the district and looked at ways that we could reduce. For example, some of the reductions, and you have that sheet, might be a full-time kindergarten teaching assistant going back down to half-time because we have half-time as the foundation for all of our kindergartens. Um, they may have had a full time this year because of the class size, but since we don't know what the class sizes will be next year in the kindergarten, um, we made that reduction. That's just one of several. But at any rate, we, made, we went through and found reductions of 730,000 from the FY17, which in combination with the 100, roughly 130, we we're able to add in about 838,000 worth of increases. Now, much more explanation of all of these numbers is in the uh, detailed budget that you can find on the website. All right, so this is a, a graphic you've seen before. It's just been updated to the, recent, to the numbers for FY18 just shows graphically how our revenue sources relate to each other in terms of um, a pie. And you can see clearly the town appropriation is the major source of revenue. When you look at this next graph, you have major categories in terms of what is spent in those categories. One thing I would bring your attention to, because some people say, well, central administration, is that just salaries, it's not. It's, it's actually a lot of things that sort of get um, uh, put together in the central office. So for example, for example, I think a lot of our subs, I believe, are in there. And we do you know, central professional development. It's a lot of things that are district level will go into that. It is not all salaries. So these are the ba major categories, and I think that one of the things that strikes everybody, um, and rightly so, is that instruction in regular ed, which is the light green, um, is, is slightly larger, uh, not significantly larger, but for instructional uh, instruction for special education. Another thing that has changed um, in the last few years incrementally is there is an area here where it's, it's right above the green. It's sort of at 3 o'clock where you see red. It's, it's a little, perhaps a little hard to see, but that's where instruction uh, interventions. So what we have been doing incrementally, and I think that we're seeing, and I know we're seeing, um, the, uh, the positive effect of it is providing more support for students that need extra support in a variety of ways, whether it would be you know, extra math, reading, um, ELL services, that you're gonna see more in, an increase in this amount of money. And I, I, I believe, and I think that this is a shared belief among all administrators, that this is money very well spent in terms of um, 
one, make, helping all students be able to access the curriculum, but also reducing potential special education costs. All right, this next uh, diagram looks at the, the actuals um, for in different categories for uh, F, from FY12 to the projected FY, well, to the superintendent's FY18 uh, budget. And you can see with elementary, which is the first set of bar graphs, that each year that that has gone up. Likewise for secondary. Special education um, hasn't had the same even stepness as the other two. We've seen a little bit of a spike uh, in uh, 17 and 18 there. The next, the lowest um, set of bar, uh, bar graphs is curriculum instruction. You can see that's pretty, pretty flat. And that's basically all of our um, instructional materials. And I think there's some professional development in that as well. Yeah. Administration. Again, you can see that it's been fairly, relatively flat. And it has actually come down a little bit again as we, um, as we look at this. And then we have our other um, categories of IT, facilities, and um, transportation, again, remaining flat. Now, one of, one of our concerns, and I think it's something we really do need to look at in the years ahead, if we're doing a little bit this next year, is the kind of support for technology that we have. We have one instructional education specialist, uh, technology specialist for all of elementary schools, one. I mentioned that actually at a meeting the other day, and they, and they said, you have many? How many? Um, so that is something we need to take a look at. And we've had a part-time one at the middle school and um, a full-time person at the high school. But that's given the usage of technology that is going on in this district that is woefully um, inadequate. So that gives you just sort of a visual on the, the budget transfer categories. And then. Um, Going onward here, we have, I think it's one of the things that's important to talk about when we look at special education, is w one of the things is what is, what do we consider special education costs? We are trying to, and we have done, I think, a pretty good job of being consistent with defining what special education costs are and staying with that so we would have year-to-year -year comparisons. And these include grant-funded costs, legal and transportation costs, which directly support a student's IEP. It does not include any of the interventions that we do. So when you see an increase in special education, that is not due to interventions. Um, it's not due to guidance or social work or any, unless there's a, a, a particular assignment of that social worker to um, special education classes. So special education is legally mandated for eligible students. Interventions are not. Um, however, while they're not, they're essential as we help struggling learners. And I think that the data we have shows that it's, it's certainly making a difference. But I do want to point that out because uh, we're very pristine about how we compare special education costs from year to year. And in fact, in the, in the diagram, uh, it's not in this particular PowerPoint, but it is in the budget book. The, the thing that you will see, which we've seen over many more years than just from FY12 to FY18, the percent increases in special education is, looks like a jagged, a jagged um, line graph. I mean, we have, Increase one year 14% and another year 1%. And that is the nature of special education. Um, so as you look at a six year look at intervention <laughs> expenses, th there has been a slight increase every year. And um, not huge, but uh, certainly not at the same rate as we would see uh, the increase in general ed, which is the um, the gray bars there. And as you can see, um, the, which one is this? You, all of them increase a little bit, except for, hmm? I know, the, 
You have a different color than yeah, yours. Yeah. yeah. So the sure. that that's, that it didn't show up very well, but it's actually sort of a light blue. Uh, the blue is the uh, general education. The red in the diagram you have are your interventions. And uh, the green are special education. So general education, special education are increasing. General education at a, at, a, at a slightly higher rate than special ed interventions. Um, it's increasing only slightly in comparison. So the last slide here for people who are listening, you can just go to the APS website and uh, it's go to budget information which is in the left quick links and it'll take you right to um, the superintendent's budget and it'll take you back many years if you're interested in in past years as well so that's just an overview of this um, of where we are with the budget for FY18 and the purpose of tonight is to have a, a, a discussion about all of this all right great mr. Hainer first off uh, I'd just like to say the figures that I gave you a copy of it, and I'm going to be talking tonight are based on the book that we have. Mm -hmm. I didn't bring the book, so I downloaded the, what we have on the web page. So these numbers are in conflict right now. The, uh, the budget, I, I would suggest that we update that on a regular basis because the numbers have changed. The FY17 budget is as of 12-15-16 uh, on the web page. The book that we have is January 31st, mm. 17. So the numbers have dramatically changed. The other thing before I start into specifics, and I don't mean to beat this horse, but looking back six years under the longevity, we've shown a negative on longevity five out of the six years. So I would ask the superintendent to look into that very, very carefully going forward. Uh, we've talked about that in the past. Overage, yeah. Well, not necessarily over the history, whatever it has happened, each year, this is, we've talked about it, it should be a fixed figure, we know who it is, the number should not be a difficult thing, but in our history, on the budget history, in on our webpage, five out of the six years have shown a negative, and one year was even greater than what we have this year, which is tight. Um, I don't necessarily expect answers for all these tonight, I just wanna share them uh, with everybody. Um, you know, in the budget book we have, we see a difference, uh, an increase of 285,000, close to 286,000 under the uh, teacher aid and salary. Uh, we've, in part of the presentation of the book, it showed that we were not gonna fully fund it. We talked a little bit, Dr. Bodie talked a little bit about it. But that 285,000, even with a 2% salary increase with the, based on the figure from 17, uh, translates into at least, uh, I think, uh, seven and a half, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 11 more positions, a plus. So I'd just like to get that straightened out. The summer program, um, the question I guess, is that summer program related to our special uh, education? Yes. So, okay, so that a $12,000 increase would be expected from year to year, that, that's understood. Mm -hmm. Administrative stipends has a, a close to a $48,000 increase in the budget. Could you talk about that? Well, we have some, we have, for example, I'll just give you a couple examples. We have one administrator that is covering for supervision of guidance, which we, we have two administrators doing that. Um, we have three administrators covering for performing arts. Uh, and, and so any stipend that, that is in that area, we have a stipend for um, additional work around uh, I, those are existing positions. I mean, this this is a forty-eight thousand dollar increase over what we currently have. So, are you adding more? I don't think any administrative stipends have changed. Uh, this is something I need to look at. Okay, I don't. I'm just I don't... bringing that to your attention. So, the administrative stipend is, is up by forty-eight thousand. Yeah. Um, the teacher moving allowance. Uh, it's still a fixed rate that we're in the current contract. So that piece hasn't changed. There's a $3,000. It's not a fixed rate. Uh, it's a per diem rate. Thank you. That solves that. In anticipation, we're just looking to have the Stratton people move back. We're not looking to have anything. Uh, maybe one or two might move in a transfer, but n no massive change. Thompson. That. Thank you. Solves that. Okay. 
Uh, Mass teachers retirement pensions, it's the exact same for the past three years. Salaries increase and our part of the pensions uh, should increase. And we're, all, we're budgeting 127428 That's for 16, 17, and 18. So I'd ask you to look at that. That might show as a deficit or it, it stayed static and I, I can't understand. I know we have plus and minus as teachers, but it shouldn't be the exact number every year. To look into that. Uh, it's not. <coughs> have to look into that. Okay. Um, tuitions to other schools. I assume that special education. But with, uh, we're looking at a, a 2.2 million dollar increase. Are these all IEP right? Uh, the line item, by the way. I'm sorry. I should give you 83201. Is what it is. Um, Tuition to other schools? Right, and, and we're looking at, at the budget book that we have, we're looking at a, a $2.2 .2 million increase. That's pretty steep. When later on, um, we're looking at out of district tuition, a decrease of uh, $186,000. One of the things that came up today, and I'm not speaking to this particular one, but it has to do in the, in the lens that you look at a particular um, item. In fact, this came up. Tony Mertz is, is um, helping, as she did in the fall, uh, as we look for a new CFO. And a question had come up, and she looked at it. It really depends on which lens you look at it, whether it's object or program. And it may really be due to the lens than it is to the actual increase. But we don't have any tuitions to other programs unless they're special ed, and they're, they're tied to an IEP. This is, this is in the budget, it goes from $5.7 million to $7.9 million. That's a, that's a pretty steep increase. Which, which section is it? The line the, number is... Section 2? It's 6. Isn't this 6-3? No. This, the, the one I'm talking about, it was in the book, was section 2, line 83201. Tuitions to other schools. And I, I do expect that to be... 83201. Uh, titled Tuitions to Other Schools. In section two, wait, section two doesn't have any. Doesn't numbers. have a, oh, anything. You need something else. No, in my book it was section two. Yeah, section not two this section. Section. So look in section, look in section seven then. Try that. That. Well, see, that's that's the thing that gets confusing. Uh, that's the object summary. I. That's what Ms. Mertz was saying is that there's. You can get you can get confused about what's in in what which of these categories just by going from one Eight lens three. to another. Yeah, okay. It's but that's not, that can't be the total district tuition to other schools. No. That's much too small of a number. Much too small. Mm -hmm. So that's their... The, all I'm saying is that line increased by, by, by $2.2 million. And I'm concerned about that increase. That's all. It, it doesn't show in this section. I, I think we're talking... Go to... 83201. Just a second. Section six. It does. It is in section 7. Ec it actually Ec is three. a... No, no. It's a... It's a Again, you're looking it's like at a $700 increase. You're right? looking at the you're looking at the you're looking between the FY17 and the FY18 budget. It only goes up about eight hundred thousand. Yeah, exactly. Go about eight hundred thousand. I looked at the wrong section. section. Yeah. All right. Section six. I don't know. Yep. Section six, three, not section seven. Three, not two I'm in seven. Look, look at, it's, it's in all of these, but yeah. this is where Bill's seen the discrepancy. Think, and Thank what you. Is it? What number? It's section six, page three of three. Yeah. Thank you. It's line um, 6848 and 6851 are both weird. Thank you. Oh, day students. No, both of them. Okay, right. I don't see either one of those numbers in my section. So. 86, what is it again, Cassie? It's section 6, yep. page 3 of 3. Yep. Um, and there, I think, no, it's not. It looks like it's going down. And okay. Six eight four eight and six eight five one. Just moving them from one line item to the other. Six eight five one. I'm strict tuition residential. No, that's yeah. not the number he's looking at. Those are not the numbers he's looking at. It's in section seven. I found uh -huh. it there. Eight three two zero one. It's on page two of three. Okay. Is there? It looks like I'll look at that again. If you add I'll, those numbers I'll, together, the I'll I'll look at those again. Day, okay. They look very similar to the other numbers. So maybe it's okay. a moving of somebody. Let me go back. Eighth. 
83301. It I, might help. I, I've asked um, Ms. Mertz if she would come to the March 2nd meeting. I think it might be helpful for her to also just sort of re-explain all these different lenses. Um, all right. Because they do get confusing as you try to get a handle on, on different things because it's just, as I said, a different lens. And different things can be put into different categories. I'll wait, I'll wait for that part and I'll get my figures correct. One last one, vocational transportation. Mm -hmm. Is that, mm -hmm. to, to, why, yeah. why, why is that not part of their budget? Well, let me, okay. Because it's an increase of $105,000. Yes. We've had some increases in students going to other than Minuteman Vocational. And actually, we did for a while. And then last year, we had some, um, for example, the, the agricultural school. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, here's the, here's the challenging part. Though the town has a vocational budget. Mm -hmm. It's called the Minuteman Vocational Budget. And so... Only monies that are sent, expended at Minuteman come out of that. So what's happened the last couple of years is vocational education tuitions have, and transportation have come out of the operating budget, our operating budget. For, including Minuteman? No. No, no, no. Well, this is the, but, right, right but now. But going we're, forward, we're going to have a warrant article this year that is more generally stated for vo vocational education. Our FY18 budget is $5 million. No, no, we, for vocational? No. I think Mr. Maybe I'm looking at the... Mr. Slippin thinks that he can... Go ahead. Mr. Slippin. Okay. Um, under Massachusetts law, if a child wants to do a vocational program that's not offered at Minuteman or offered in the town of Arlington, they have a right to attend another vocational mm -hmm. school that has that program. This is called a Chapter 74 mm -hmm. uh, student. So that when a student moves under Chapter 74, that has nothing to do with Minuteman, that is a town expenditure that comes out of the town budget. Now the question here is how we're accounting for it locally, but that, and that transportation line item here is for those Chapter 74 students going to another vocational school, uh, and which is a town responsibility, uh, uh, an Arlington responsibility as opposed to a Minuteman responsibility. But five point three million dollars. We don't have other than we have several, and we get the agricultural school, mm -hmm. and we may have one other unique they one. Go to, they go to uh, the other place. We have a student, I believe, this year is at Cambridge Ringe and Latin to their vo vo vocational school. Okay. Um, let me see. Can't be that much there. In it's the not, current it's board. Not, it's All right, so let's get clarity in the numbers. It's, 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 let's it's, get clarity in the numbers next okay. time, I think. I, I like, okay. Going forward, again, I'd just like to repeat the current FY18 uh, thing that's on our webpage is already out of sync. Mm -hmm. Numbers change in, in the month period, so we need to keep that updated if we're going to keep that on the web page. It's going to have to change almost monthly. Oh, you just have to get an updated version. Because it, 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 it's... The, 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 the current line is uh, FY17 budget as, well, on this page it was 1115, and our book has uh, uh, 13117. So if, if people are going to look at numbers, they're looking, the, the pages are not current. That's all I'm saying on the well, web page for that one. We should have the same dated pages, is what we should have. Yes. Um, I'm not sure that, we, uh, we've never updated our online budgets. First of all, this is a pro this is a proposed budget. Mm -hmm. It's not the school committee's budget yet, and so that's what you'll be voting on the 16th. Right, but going forward to the finance committee and the town meeting and stuff, whatever's presented to the two groups should match what we have on the web page. That's all I'm saying. Going forward. Yes, we should make sure that the final the budget that goes to finance committee and town. I meeting. made the mistake thinking tonight I didn't bring the book. I downloaded from the, our web page and. That's why my number. Thank you. I, I can I can definitely take a look at that. Have somebody look at that. No, no, I'm done for now. I'll go back and. I'm taking. Okay, um, you good? For now. Okay. Uh, other comments, Mr. Slippin. Yeah, I think, I think one of the compelling things that are going on here in the discussion that we're having at the last <laughs> meeting 
involved what's the appropriate rate of circuit breaker use next year. And if we follow past practice, our circuit breaker revenue will decrease uh, in spite of two years of drastically increased special ed expenditures for out of district placement. <clears throat> in the budget book, coming into uh, uh, about page eight, uh, seven and eight, where we're making the special ed argument, we go through the actual expenditures from fiscal 11 to fiscal 16 and have f fiscal 17 projected with, with the big spike in our right. projected expenditure. But it, the real story is not just that, but where our fiscal 17 budgeted number was because the projected in 17 is was about 600,000 more than we anticipated in the, in the budget. And that if we're looking at the 17 projected to 18 budget, it doesn't look like a huge draw, uh, jump. But in, in, compared to the 16 actual mm -hmm. and the 17 budgeted, both the 17 actual and this 18 budget are pretty substantive increases. And that's an important story that we, first of all, we need to be able to tell effectively when we go to Finance Committee. Uh, secondly, I think that in terms of making a persuasive argument for at least the position that I hold is that we should be a little more aggressive in taking circuit breaker money to see those big jumps there, uh, uh, particularly above the budgeted number for 17. Um, there, we, we should at least hold ourselves harmless on the, uh, uh, on the circuit breaker to take less money in the circuit breaker uh, for next year's budget, uh, even though we've had significant increases in special ed costs for two years in a row, I think that, that, that there's merit in terms of the uh, discussion to plot that out. And I think that graphing out the, the special ed with the anticipated uh, the budget and, and the anticipated uh, expenditures compared to the uh, fiscal 18 budget would sort of be an important tool for us in terms of making a decision whether we're going to take zero additional money out of the circuit breaker we're receiving in fiscal 18 or whether we want to go and be a little more aggressive in taking money out of that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I mean, the, the budget is pretty pretty tight it is what it is it aligns to previous year's budgets um, the priorities are clearly uh, laid out uh, we're not fulfilling many needs or wishes um, uh, the the real action in this thing is going to be preparing for fiscal 19 as we open the uh, Gibbs and look at look to new classrooms that we need to be staffing I mean, does the budget subcommittee want to do a motion at this time? Do we want? No. No. Okay. No. Dr. Allison, we may meet mm -hmm. for our next okay. meeting. Okay. I just wanted to know mm -hmm. if that was this on the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Allison, Ampey. So yeah. So I have some questions. I've sent. I had sent them on last week as we were requested, but I guess the timing was such that there wasn't time for many answers. Yeah, Diane Jackson um, was leaving, and so it made yeah. it tricky. Um, yes. So my first question was actually addressing the same same thing that um, Mr. Schlickham was talking about, that thinking about the circuit breaker that we're going to receive for fiscal 17, comparing it to what we received for fiscal 16, we're actually going to see approximately $1.55 million spent more in 17 than we did in 16. Mm -hmm. And that's going to translate into some additional amount of circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. um, and we hadn't actually discussed that before at this table that the difference isn't just what's different mm -hmm. between the budget, it's actually what's different between fiscal 16 spending and fiscal 17 spending. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a whole lot bigger difference than just the, the mm -hmm. addition over the budgeted. Um, to try and estimate what our circuit breaker might be, 
I was wondering if we could find out how many children there are in out of district day and residential programs this year and in fiscal 16. And with that information, we should be able to at least roughly calculate what the magnitude of the circuit breaker will be. Um, I can find the information for 16 because it's online with the chapter 70 um, stuff, but I don't have the information for 17. So if we could get that, I, I think budget subcommittee would like to have, it, it doesn't have to be down to the absolute, you know, single student and stuff, but we need a good sense of it so that we can do some kind of estimation. That number I gave you at the last meeting, that was, um, that was the estimation, but you know, we could have, um, uh, that all that information has been done. They, the special ed department's gone through every single student mm -hmm. and what the costs were and what the ex expectation would be. Um, so we, we definitely have that analysis already done and we'd be happy to share it with you. That would so you be helpful. I think one of the things that I know this, the issue of circuit breaker is a big one as we think about it because you, you incur it in a year where you have heavy expenses and then it's, you don't use it till later so you have this mis, mis, you know, mismatch sort of, <laughs> so to speak. So we're going to not have nearly 200000 185000 next year that we had this year. That's a circuit breaker because of the way we budget. Mm -hmm. That's why I've, I've said that, that you know, putting a, a million dollars aside, I think, is something we could look at. I'm not sure that we should look at Circuit Breaker. Um, in fact, um, if you go to the DESE website on Circuit Breaker, you'll see at the very bottom what they, that what they strongly suggest is best practice. And best practice is to do what we're doing, which is, you, you know, you incur the cost, you get the money, you bank it for a year, and then you use it in the next year's budget because it gives you consistency. Now, one of the ways that has helped us as a district is that we've been able to, in those years where we have more money than we might need uh, in, sp in, in special education, is we've been able to put it into a stabilization account. In fact, that stabilization account we're going to use this year to help us with these overages. Um, and about five years ago, when we had a year like this, that's when we were able to break the cycle. Mm -hmm. And it was is exactly that that allows us to ha handle these, you know, these just tremendous ups, you know, ups and downs that come that we experience. And I think we need to make sure that we always, you know, budget fiscally prud prudently so that we have some buffers to those kind of years. And, and that's my concern of, yeah. of, not, of not staying with so, what we're doing. So I respectfully, I understand what you're saying and have, I mean, I argued for it. That's why I argued that we go yeah. into this to begin with um, back five years ago. Um, but I think even though Desi doesn't have it written in the small print, they would also think it's, it's best practice to have a flat or very minimally increasing um, out of district tuition budget year to year. And, but that's not what our district is seeing. We're right. seeing ups and downs. Um, and I, mm -hmm. on, for my part, would not recommend and would strongly counsel against us dipping heavily into circuit breaker. But I think to consider using some of the excess that we're seeing this year versus fiscal 16 um, mm -hmm. to basically flatten out some of the um, revenue, you know, the, the revenue shortfall that we're seeing, I think is not an imprudent thing to do. I think that to not do it is effectively shorting all of our students for the purposes of maintaining a big pile of money. The reason I would not counsel us to dip further into it is that that big pile of money is helpful if we have another year next year like we did this year 
where our tuitions go up another 700. That's our kind of our second pot in reserve that so that we don't go totally short. But I think that we could dip into it a little bit. Um, but to be able to calculate that, there's numbers mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we need. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, I finished. Mm -hmm. um, can I go on to my other question? Or do we want to keep going? Uh, let's see, actually, let's stick to this yeah. question first, and then and then we'll do mm -hmm. Dr. Reddy, and then I know um, Mr. Haney. One of my other concerns about using circuit breaker money for reoccurring costs is sustainability, because it's not in it's not in the base budget, really. Um, you're using that excess, and what if the next year you don't have that excess? So, in that respect, we would go into it knowing that we had done this, and if we don't have the excess in the next year, it's because we didn't incur the costs. So we have to know if we have another year where our costs go way down that we need to take some of that money and put it into our reserve or whatever um, to pass it forward so that we aren't totally short the year after. Um, but it's, it's very doable. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, let me just, uh, here. Real quick, one question. How much money have we got so far in Circuit Breaker? They give it to us in periods and then whatever's Left over, we get it in June. Are we using for this year's budget? No, how much have we got already this year on circuit breaker? Um, I think I think they've been coming in chunks of around four hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. The other thing I I just like to share. Circuit breaker is not always a guarantee. We're at the whim of of the state. If we use it, and I understand where you're coming from, and I I think it. I'm beginning to understand the the the. the the rationale for doing it, but with our luck, all of a sudden the state decides to only fund it for 50% that go in, in the following year, and we really get hurt. I'm, that's part of, I don't trust Boston, and, and, and that's my fear going forward. And uh, if, if it doesn't, I, I guess budgeting, looking for the hurricanes in the worst case scenario, you're, you're somewhat safe. I don't know, I, I have mixed feelings for it. I'm slowly being persuaded to, to your side, the, the rationale for it, and I understand that, but I don't trust Boston at all. Mr. Slipin. I mean, the one thing about the circuit breaker is that we do have at least part of the crystal ball uh, showing right now, because when the governor files his budget, we okay. have a bottom line figure of what the minimum is going to be. So at this point, we can project out to some degree of certainty that we're going to get X X number of dollars put into that pot. We don't know what the denominator is in terms of the number of claims throughout the state, but you, you know it's not going to get down to 30%. Uh, it's close to this year's number. The, the, the House and Senate are likely to put some more money in that pot. Um, they may need the, another raise. But the, th but the thing is that if, if we have an extraordinary increase in the circuit breaker that is generated by this year's enrollment, if we go into fiscal 18 and we're using the circuit breaker money generated in fiscal 16, it's a very low number. So that we'll have two years of highs while we're taking money from a low. Now, I'm not saying spend out all the circuit breaker. I think that the, the there is prudence in uh, maintaining some of the circuit breaker revenue because, you know, we end up in a situation like uh, where, where there's a big crash and it goes way down. But historically, the lowest numbers were in the 30s. And so if we're used to getting around 70, um, half the circuit breakers, in, unless the state totally abolishes circuit breaker, uh, we're, we're going to get the subsequent year. And we'll get the heads up by next January of what, what the situation is going to be. And because there's such an increase in expenditures over two years, and we're heading into a decrease year on circuit breaker, we should at least fill that hole plus a little 
And the reason why I was talking about getting more numbers surrounding budget actual uh, on, on these years and why Dr. Allison Ampey has been talking about honing in on what a realistic number for the number of students and the claimable expenses are, it is for us to be able to put a picture together visually so that either I can advocate for drawing down some of that money, I can make a rational decision in how much of that money I might want to come down, or I might be persuaded by the superintendent's argument based on the numbers that I see. And my mind is open on this. I have a position. I think we should go after it. And uh, if looking at all the numbers and all the combinations lead me to a different conclusion, that's fine. But I think we really need to be explicit in these numbers and present it out visually as sort of the center point of this budget presentation because that's where the heart and soul of this discussion is. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we talked about last time. We're going to be talking about it again, and we make our best decisions when we have our best information. Mm -hmm. yeah. So well, I just want to ask you do, you, do you have clarity about what budget is asking for in terms of information? Is that do we need to get more clarity on that? I do have, I, I have clarity, and let me repeat it so I make sure that I have that clarity. But you want to, what you really want is an analysis of what we think will be, uh, mm -hmm. what we'll bill out for Circuit Breaker, mm -hmm. which is a function of mm -hmm. the students in both residential and out of district. Mm -hmm. and how much mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I wasn't, when you say what we want is an analysis, I'm not even, I'm looking for a good, a real good estimate, but yeah. not when I Doesn't think analysis, I, I'm thinking yeah. down to the. There's a good I, estimate, I, I, I a good estimate. Before, so I just want to yes. make sure that we have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we have, we estimate. have, okay. yeah. we actually have that done. So maybe we should have a budget subcommittee meeting mm -hmm. after vacation. Um, I will say this, that um, the, the, there's, the, I, I can understand where, where people are, are coming from on this, but I do know that there's two things that potentially could be very positive to the FY18 for right. us, and that is there's a, there is a chance this year, that, believe it or not, that we may actually get a little bit of a bump in the fourth quarter on Circuit Breaker. Mm -hmm. That's possible. In fact, there's been hints about that. Mm -hmm. Nobody's saying anything definite. The second is that, that the extraordinary relief, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure when we'll hear about it, but I think it'll probably be by April or May because it has to be in this fiscal year. And if that's the case, then what's going to happen is that money that we might have to have taken out of this revolving account, the tuition in, we don't have to. So there's a little bit more cushion there, too. Now, the, the thing about it is there's so many things that we could fund mm -hmm. that some of these things could even wait until later in the, you know, in the summer even, for that mm -hmm. matter. But there is one area which I think, given that I, I'm, I think that there's a good chance we're going to get the extraordinary relief, at least some, and we may get a little bump, and to your arguments, we have higher numbers, is I, I feel comfortable budgeting out of district to actual costs right now, this moment in time. Mm -hmm. um, it's built in an expectation of more mm -hmm. expenses, and yet, and there probably will be, but we don't know what that'll be, and but we have cushion for those. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, uh, I just wanted to say I, I do continue to worry about this budget mm -hmm. that it is so tight mm -hmm. with the um, increase in um, enrollment that we will continue to expect um, as you mentioned yourself every time we hire a teacher we don't just hire one person we hire yeah. some other things and that's not built into this budget what's also not in this budget now is um, adequate TAs to handle potentially very large classrooms. And, and the good thing about maybe creating a cushion for TAs is that that's not as much of a commitment as mm -hmm. hiring you know, another mm -hmm. teacher. Mm -hmm. If you have a few TAs you, and there's a budget <gasps> problems later on, you, know, you mm -hmm. can make different choices next year. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that I worry about with this budget. And I would, I think, I would like to see a cushion. Um, Last time I mentioned that 
um, 200,000, if we were going to touch the rate, might be a better number than 300. It certainly, we're talking about going down this year mm -hmm. by close to 200,000. And so that feels like a more comfortable number. So I just want to throw that out. Okay, oh. Dr. Allison. Just, just to point out, when we were talking the two or $300,000, that's when we were just looking at the mm -hmm. amount above the, uh, the FY budget, mm -hmm. the right. FY 17 budget. So that number should actually be significantly more. It's the difference, mm -hmm. and, and that the problem is I don't know how much, because I know the numbers for the extra above the budget, but I don't know it for the difference between FY16 and FY17. Mm -hmm. oh, right, no, I'm talking about the decrease uh, that we know that we're getting mm -hmm. less than we got last year for Circuit Breaker. It's, close, it's closer to 200,000. When we talk about the revolving fee, you know, the, that, right. that we yeah. know what We know what fiscal 16 Circuit Breaker is right, going to be. Right. They've already put that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, is that what you mean? Because that's, what that's what's going into, we're getting, Right now, we're getting paid for fiscal 16 circuit right, breaker. Right. Each quarter, we get chunks. Right, right. Um, and that. And we expect and FY17. As we, and, we put those into, and that money, you know, it's all going into a pot. Right. And that money goes right. plunk into the FY18 mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we expect that the FY17 money that we'll be getting, the expectation it seemed like, was closer to $200,000 less than we're getting. That's oh, that's no. what Dr. Ray mentioned tonight. Well, that's what mm -hmm. no. For what we're what we're using in our budget mm -hmm. next year will be two hundred thousand dollars less than what we're using in our budget right. this year. Exactly. That's what I meant. Yeah. That's what she just said tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Because the FY sixteen circuit breaker is right. less than the yes, amount exactly. that was budgeted into. I mean, the amount that's going into FY eighteen, which is mm -hmm. what we incurred. Mm -hmm. In, in FY 16. 16. Right. Mm -hmm. Is less, is than, less we, than the 17, we, 15. Than 15. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, yes exactly. We spent less. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. Yes. Okay. That's how I understand it. So, yes. okay. Yeah. Um, so I actually had a question about the extraordinary expense, expenses relief money. If we get that, mm -hmm. does that count against our circuit breaker no. for next year? No. So it's just extra. Extra. Mm -hmm. And we and we can still claim all of that for circuit breakers, so we get like double yeah. pay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, sweet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not related to circuit breaker at all, mm -hmm. and it's money for FY17. So monies that we were going to have to take out of that revolving account, we wouldn't have to take, mm -hmm. assuming we got mm -hmm. okay. equivalent. Okay, and it. it doesn't have any effect on. Uh, I'm just. There's I'm, no effect I'm on circuit that They're breaker. not just saying, "Oh, here we're forwarding it to you right. early." It sounds like there's a catch. It, it does. <laughs> it, no, I'm serious. It, it doesn't sound like. But like the, the state's the, practice. <laughs> but the state has only five million dollars to be spread across okay. all the districts. Okay, so it's not going to be a lot of money. It's not going to be. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'll move on from this topic. If okay, so wait. Um, I would like yeah, to say yeah, something about this sorry. topic. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that, um, again, I think that the important part is what are we going to use the money for? Mm -hmm. So I still don't know one way or the other how much I'm for or against it, but it totally depends on what the money is mm -hmm. for and you know, how much money it is. So I think that, you know, if, if all of that comes together and we can say, you know, we really want to, I'm just pulling this out of, you know, the list, um, you know, we really want that dean at the high school or we really want to give another head of a teacher to the high school or whatever, and we all agree that that should be something that we should fund this year. Mm -hmm. And the only way to fund it is through this method. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's, I'm kind of looking for that. Mm -hmm. Come, mm -hmm. coming together of, you know, we really think that th this should be a priority and we don't currently have the funds for it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, it, I mean, I, I know that there's a lot of things on this list that we would like, but I mean, I think that we really have to mm -hmm. think about which of those that mm -hmm. aren't making it are so important that we should push them over and we should find the funding. Mm -hmm. So, How can so I go yeah, on? Go, in, go on with okay. this, Dr. Aslan. <laughs> Okay, um, so last year there was a big push to have additional kindergarten TAs. Mm -hmm. Do the principals understand that we would essentially be funding principal assistance, whether it's assistant principals or or extra help and you know administrative help or whatever, at the cost of having more TAs in the classroom? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. They definitely and they, understand. And big discussion. Mm -hmm. And they're okay with it. Well, okay is <laughs> no, they're not okay with it. Okay. They're just willing to pay but, that price. But they, I guess. but they, that's the price. They're, 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 they're understand. They understand what's that. What's happening increasingly is that we want our, our building principals to be instructional leaders. We want them in the classroom. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have a formula. You have to be 40 percent, 20. But on the other hand they want to do that and they want to be there to support teachers and yet there are lots of administrative tasks not to mention discipline you know and as having a social worker it helps but the social worker isn't expected to do the disciplinary um, piece of it so it, they, they really get pulled a lot and um, the more students you have in a building you have 450 students 470 students a lot of kids mm -hmm. So that, that's the issue. Um, no, they, they understand that. And, and actually, if we had more money, you know, that comes our way this year, mm -hmm. I fully support having more support, TA support in the building. That's one of the things teachers feel they need. Um, totally support that. We also have to be able to get teacher, uh, teaching assistance, and Mr. Spiegel could talk to that issue. It's not that easy, actually. It's not easy, especially for special ed teaching assistants. Um, for some of the special programs, that can be more challenging. I think if for kindergarten teaching assistants, if we hired full time, I think it'd be a little bit easier, only because there's so many um, candidates who are looking for teaching positions in the elementary level or in grad school for elementary teaching or uh, early education positions and see it, and it has been a way in our district and other districts for teachers to get into the system mm -hmm. and get to know people and get jobs once they become available. So um, I think it, there's a little bit easier to get um, in the, the kindergarten teaching assistants mm -hmm. rather than the special program, special yeah. ed yeah. teaching assistants. Mm -hmm. um, can I add a comment to yeah. that? Um, to, to fully fund full-time kindergarten TAs would be about 200,000. I think if they were going to put more TAs into uh, an elementary building, I think I'd, I think a better way of doing it would be put them in as building subs, or a, a, a building, not you know, a building, yeah, a building TA, because then that that they that person can be moved where there's a need. I mean, we have some kindergartens that have 19 in them, mm -hmm. and having a half-time TA works well. We we try to do all of the um, the literacy part of our curriculum in the morning and do the out of cluster, the out of um, the specialists in the afternoon in kindergarten. So there's, they, they're handling some of that with scheduling as well. But having more, uh, an, an more assistance in the building would be terrific, particularly when getting a sub on a, you know, it's hard. And philosophically, one of the things we struggle with um, is we know that embedded pro professional development is the most important. And what that means is you want teachers to be able to go into other teachers' classrooms. We have the lab program you've heard a lot about. And we ha we're, and we're doing courses for instructional leadership for <laughs> teachers. But that means that they're out of the classroom. And so we need to have competent people that can go in. And it's, it's probably better to have somebody you know is, you know, in the building that is a, you know, is really top notch rather than be going on the sub pool on, on ASOP all the time. Now, so that's the dilemma. We know that's what really enhances and makes us move forward. On the other hand, we still have to cover classes. So that's where I think we would put, would prefer to put extra teaching assistance. Okay. That right, Dr. kind Zimmer. of feeds into my next question, which was looking at decreasing building subs as a way of yeah. increase, as way of freeing up money. We've heard as we just did now, that schools are having great difficulty finding substitute t teachers. So I'm asking, how can we justify decreasing the building subs, and what's, what effect is that going to have on the schools, and what is the true cost? Because it seems to me we would just end up hiring more temporary substitutes, or kids would be in the equivalent of long haul or old haul or something. So... Mm -hmm. Great point. That suggestion was not an elementary suggestion. That was a secondary. Right. I understand. And, and I, I would say that'd be actually one of the things at the top of my list to, to get back because 
when we had three here at the high school, it was woefully inadequate. Mm -hmm. we, we, you've heard about security issues. Mm -hmm. we, we actually could use more because we really should be having somebody that's just literally walking this, you know, these, these corridors, which stretch into miles, uh, and watching doors. It's, it's uh, important. So, you know, if we had extra money, I, that would be a mm -hmm. top, top of my list anyway. Okay, I'm, I'm just concerned about freeing up money by getting rid of these people right. and that we're actually, you know, that's actually a significant hit. It, it, but then that's the whole thing. That's, a, that's what the dilemma of these budgets are. It's like, how mm -hmm. do you ba balance the, the other things that you need too? Okay. So I also have various line item things, but I've, I've sent them to you I before, have right? And mm -hmm. so we can go over those, maybe a budget subcommittee or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, but those were my bigger picture questions. Yes, yes. I'm starting. All right. Um, so um, my first question uh, is: Do I still would like? I would like a clear plan for how we're going to divvy up those assistant principals or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, before we just blanket fund mm -hmm. some amount of Something. people somewhere, I really want a clear plan of what school, who it is, or you know, what the job expectations are, um, that mm -hmm. kind of thing is I really want to, and, and I guess for the schools that we want to put it in, I just want to make sure that those are, you know, obviously, you know, the, the numbers kind of bear that out. Um, so I, I still want to really see something like that. Um, I, I have a question about the mm -hmm. music director. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we currently have a 0.5 music director, correct? No. We have, a, we have no music director. So when, when did we that happen? Because <laughs> I thought we had had a half of one or a quarter of one or something. No, when Mr. Tassoni retired, the, um, he, we haven't had one for a couple of years. A couple of years ago when we actually did have money in the budget, we looked for somebody, but it was 0.5. We found that that would, would not work. People were not we just basically had no candidates to speak of. So going forward, we realized that it, it, it has to be a full-time position. We'll give an option of having 0.5 or a full, but the full will be a combination of the administrative piece and some teaching. In fact, we've, you know, AEA and AAA, we've, we've all talked about this and we've, we've come to an agreement that we would, this could work. So that would be what we would be looking to do. Now in terms of, um, we would, we already have a, a point two equivalent of money. I sometimes I look at these as money, it's just money, right. yeah. mm -hmm. um, that we could put toward that. And then we also have um, some needs in the elementary that we've, we've, we've We've added a few FTEs here and there just to patch holes. We could pull those together. And in some ways, the, um, a director working with the elementary works better than having people across secondary and elementary uh, because just how different the schedules are. But I, I think that we could have a full-time position and it fits in our budget. We just would have to find the right person. Okay, so that's why there's only half one that you're recommending. Right, because so the, the it's in, from the other. The teaching piece is already embedded in the budget. Okay, all right. Um, I guess I not. I know this is not going to be popular with anybody in music, but I still have a question as to how we prioritize that over a dean at the high school, or you know. So I guess I still want to see some idea like I know how hard this is I know how many things were requested but I don't have a really good sense of why we picked the things we did why those were prioritized I think that that's still something I'm struggling with I'm, and I'm not saying that music isn't important it's very well, important it's vital to some children um, but I just again they are they all are way up there and at some point we just have to make the decision that one is higher than the other and I just I, I just well as far as the high school goes there are ways that 
ways that we're helping with that dean need you, know, you, you think about it in terms of what your needs are in terms of what needs to get done right and by having the director of SEL and guidance, we're taking some work off of a dean, a heavy load off of one of the deans, which is gonna be very freeing. We're also going to, um, what I would like to do, and I think this would be the, the choice of the high school principal, is to have um, a point for another point for assistant and then move it into a 1.0, maybe the following year, um, ease it in. <laughs> Um, to do not necessarily the evaluations, but to do a lot of the assistant principal pieces. There's a lot of things that um, Bill McCarthy just gets buried with, with facilities. Mm -hmm. You know, following that leak or, you know, it's, it's, it can be. And so there have been some things that he had in his job, which actually he has in his job because we don't have a director of guidance, and that is like running MCAS. Right. So we took that out this year and took it, and Mary Villano's doing it as a project so we're we're take we're trying to get some of the tasks done but not in different ways right okay it's not like we're not addressing it right 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 okay um and wait i think i had one more oh so then the other question i had was about the um so i asked a question about the interventions i wanted to know if the four million was teachers curriculum or both and um Ms. Johnson pointed me to the fact that Section 11 is all about um, interventions, and it kind of lays all of that out. Um, and my question about the interventions is that I'm a little bit confused as to why things like ELL are in interventions, because ELL is required. I mean, we have to do this. Whereas, to me, mm -hmm. the difference would be that interventions are things that we know are the right thing to do and that we do them to mitigate and help students not kind of go into special ed or to you know beef up mm -hmm. uh, support that students need um, and so and yet in here are a lot of things like for example I think that things like reading intervention that obviously is obviously an intervention math RTI um, but there's a lot of ELL um, in here mm -hmm. and, and I feel like I don't yeah. know how much of that is an intervention so much as it's a, a, something we have to do by law. We have to have those. We have, we do. There's regulations in terms of number of hours. I'm gonna give you an answer and then I'll ask um, Dr. Chester if she wants to add anything <gasps> in. The, um, one could argue it should be a separate category or in interventions. See, actually, students, as they were level one or level two, they could actually be in a classroom if the teacher was dual certified. Right. So. So the fact that you have a school where somebody's not dual certified and you have, you have to have your level ones and level twos have an ELL pull out for two hours, three hours, is that an intervention or is that, it's, what's required is the service. It, right. what's, not, what's not specified is how it, you do it. And so actually one of the things we've been looking at is trying to get more dual certified people so we can have our students in a, in a classroom and then you don't have to do any pullouts. Okay. So I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, and if you'd like, we could pull no, ELL. Just, it, well, it's just a little confusing because yeah, I, I was like, that. oh wow, this is awesome, you know, to see this. And then mm -hmm. as I was looking at it, I was just like, ha, huh, I wonder why we put ELL in there. Yeah. That's all, it's just a question. My guess would be, it, it's not, I understand I know, it's that kind it's of on that weird, law, you know. But the amount of service that you given is that you have to give is very broad in yeah. terms of what the description is. And so, you know, it reflects the choices that we've made regarding services. You could, as Dr. Bodie has said, you could argue to put it into a different category, but it is not something that's offered to everyone. Right. And so therefore, to in our way of thinking, it's an intervention because it's additional assistance that a student needs because of that student's particular challenges. Okay. And so that's, that's how I, I just I just it. wanted to understand sure. because, like I said, mm -hmm. special ed is very clearly, you know, its own category and in some ways is almost like an ELL category, even though it would be very small, it would right. be weird, right? So yeah. it Except makes we sense don't to write put it into ELL a plans what we, like we do for special education plans. So in special education plans, <coughs> we write it up and we give a very specific <laughs> commitment, which is sign, you know, has a very right. specific exactly. process yeah. that we have to follow. And ELL, our commitment is to the student, but there's not anything specifically that's written up as like a team yeah. meeting, yeah. and so that's okay. why it would be more like an intervention to okay. me. All right, cool, thanks. That was it. 
Yeah, Dr. Allison, um, um, I wanted, I'm sorry, I did have one more question, and it is a line item thing. <laughs> it's, it's what I was trying to talk about earlier. Um, in section six, page three of three, mm -hmm. lines 6848 and 6851. Okay, I'm find it myself. 68, 68, what? 68, 48. Yeah, this is out of district. It's out of district tuition day and out of district tuition, tuition. Re residential. Yep. Okay, so. 68, 48. There. The numbers are just weird, and I don't understand why. Oh, yeah, that is weird. The, yeah. They, they that's are. that big that's, jump. Yeah, that's, and, that's and, that and that's what I thought you were, yeah. I thought that's what he was talking about. In fact, that was the, the question I gave well, Ms. Mertz today to work <coughs> on. Okay. But, but what she really needs is, um, but it is uh, Andrea Campbell. $2 okay. And she's on vacation. Okay. Back next week. Okay, so we're going to get that straight now. We're confused about this as well. Yes. And it's different in section four, three of three. Um, yeah, this is not if, if you flip back to section to four, five. it's, it's I, I think these should be the same numbers. I think that's what we'll have to find out from getting clarification. Yeah, it, we'll have to double anyway, we'll cross just, check all those numbers that have to do with out of district placement and yeah. whether it be residential or day and, and see where it appears in the budget in the different it, places. And yeah, I cross check them. just anyway, it, it's weird. Yeah. So, um, well, one thing we do know is even if it's not. If it's there, I don't want people to think that maybe it's wrong. What we do know is how much we're paying for out of district day, how much we're paying for out of district residential, and it shows up in the bottom line. Right, and that that's could what it, the numbers look. It looks yeah. to me like it just some of the number, some of the balance shifted from day to I mean from right. residential to day, and I'm not sure it was intended right. to do that for for actual purposes so yeah if one goes up if you and one could, goes down by right right the same and it's amount. about by about the same amount so, again so. i want to assure you that um and allison elmer is not here tonight but i know that working with them very closely and dr Bodie as well um that they know exactly who the students are exactly where they're going to school and at this point in the year right. exactly what the cost is right. going to be right mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it just it just looks sure if, it, if it was if it's My things. <laughs> actually reflecting changes in student things mm -hmm. there's other questions i would have but until we get it better balanced out i'm not going to go there um so maybe if we could have an update it at the third i'm um, the, the second, second meeting yeah. on the second or something yeah because then this is we just need to know what's going on <laughs> right so we hope to get some of the more detailed <laughs> questions answered on the second um or, and i mm -hmm. i encourage actually if anyone has more detailed questions, to get them in really soon so that there's no long period of time to... Or next Thursday, okay. because um, the, Ms. Perth will be here next Thursday working with our new accountant, and uh, okay. um, so that would be a good day for them to, to delve into this. Mm -hmm. It could, in fact, be the only day they will be together before the second. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. That, was, that was my only one. Um, well, I just have a couple of big picture things. I just want to say that one thing I'm particularly excited about in this budget, I know it's a sad budget, but <laughs> is the Director of um, Health and Wellness. I'm, guidance, health, the guidance, wellness. health, yeah. CL and guidance. Yeah. Yeah. guidance. Um, I think that's been, um, this year has been a major initiative to uh, look at these issues of social emotional. Um, and with a director, with, with real leadership in that position, you know, with a dedicated person, um, we will hopefully get, um, e you know, even better sort of processes in place and hopefully improve the, the situation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a situation that has gotten worse for us as it's gotten worse for many, many districts. We are not alone mm -hmm. in dealing with um, increased social and emotional issues in our school system. Mm -hmm. but. Um, these are very vulnerable kids, and we've got to pay attention to this. And I'm, I'm really, really excited about this position. I say that. Uh, yeah, Mr. Hanger. Just, just to go along with that, um, I support the aspect of the director for the health and wellness. I think that is extremely important. Uh, I've suggested this to Dr. Buddy uh, outside the meeting: the idea of making that alone a full-time position, mm -hmm. and the director of guidance make that a stipend position with one of the social workers or something for the idea of organization to split these to have one person do both i'm just concerned that the health and wellness may be watered down 
uh, we, we're all in agreement of it. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting, I mean, if part of the, the, the issue with the guidance director is organization and uh, communication and things of that nature, uh, I think it'd be, it might be better served. I'm not the expert in this, I, I defer to that, but I'm very, very concerned mm -hmm. that the health and wellness person may be distracted or, or taken away. So. Okay, Dr. Buddy. I agree. Um, so we haven't had a director of guidance for a number of years, and how it has evolved is that there are organizational parts of guidance that are stipended. In some cases, it's paid for from monies that come in for you know, fees and guidance. I would propose not changing any of that because it's a well-oiled machine in that regard, but the person who's director of guidance has to do all of the um, evaluations. So that's the thing when I said the, for the dean, one dean is doing all of the evaluations as is one assistant principal. So we've got that piece of it happening as well as then somebody else does you know, music. So, um, no, I would say to try to keep the organizational pieces down as much as possible to focus on because this is going to be a K-12. Guidance is always before, 6 to 12, and we want to expand it. I, I, then, just to go forward, I'd ask us to, as a group, to ask the superintendent and the curriculum coordinator to look at this on a yearly basis because, I mean, we, we've all accepted and, and we're all in agreement the need, the health and wellness aspect of that, that just a, an evaluation of the position, it, it, we might need to look at, supporting this position with more money and going forward. We've done that. I remember just coming onto the committee, we saw the value of part-time social workers, a few social workers at the beginning. It was an exciting night that night. We, we thought we might, some of us thought it might take a couple of years to get it, and we voted unanimously to go with social workers. And that, I think, has been very beneficial. Absolutely. This health and wellness thing, I think, is gonna go on a similar track. And I ju I'm just concerned and I'd like to be proven wrong rather than proven right. Well, that, yeah. that's one of the reasons why we really look closely at not overburdening that position. Right. Um, that's why next I said what year. I said. Yeah. So. yeah. Hopefully this person can be a real thought leader in terms of yeah. And, and, and PD leader, leader too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have another big picture point I wanted to make. Um, I know parents are often um, itching to help out financially with the public school system. Um, there's a very nice, easy way to do that. The Arlington Education Foundation um, is a source of many, many great new initiatives in the district. We rely on them very heavily mm -hmm. to support um, some really fabulous things. So if, if parents feel that they have the extra money um, and they want to support education in Arlington, that is a terrific place to do it. Totally agree. Sorry to make that. Okay, um, anything else on budget? So we're gonna have a lot more, obviously, mm -hmm. um, in the next two meetings as well. Um, okay, so uh, we have our superintendent's report. We have some very big news. We do, yes. I have two things, um, both of which actually have had press releases this week. But the really great news is that we've been invited by the MSBA board to move into the feasibility study, and that is great. Um, Dr. Seuss and Dr. Allison Ampey and Mr. Thielman were all able to be there with um, Tom Manager and myself yesterday. Um, our state reps would have loved to have been there, but it was a really busy day on Beacon Hill yesterday, so they had to cancel at the last minute. But um, really, it's very exciting where we're going. The, the process is, is going to take a little bit more time than we thought in so early stages. Um, because we have had the experience recently of hiring OPMs and, and, and designers, we know what our pace is of doing that in Arlington, and it's a little bit different pace uh, because of the process they put in place, which is, you know, they're, they're entrusted in making sure that all the money that's, that taxpayers pay is well spent. And so, you know, I, and they've had a great track record. So what will end up happening is that we will, our first um, our first task will be to get an owner's project manager. And the earliest that we would be able to actually have the appointment of that would be June 5th. And that's... That's an MSB. That's, mar that's marching along. At, yeah. mm -hmm. Do we have the, the money to hire someone at that early? Has that already been established? Last June. Good. 
76 okay. percent of our voters that won't be an impediment then no no we we uh we had a two million dollar override for the feasibility study mm -hmm. and so then once the owner's project manager is selected then the owner's project manager actually does a lot of the work in to, in hiring the designer so we would anticipate if we can stick to that pace i mean we could also have it early july but I think we're aiming for the earliest possible, which is the, the, the 5th of June. Because you have to go before the, they only meet on Mondays, first Monday of the month, and that's when you come and present, you know, all of your documentation. Um, but as a result, the, over the summer will be spent in finding the designer, and then probably by the fall we'll be ready to actually do the the, the public input teachers though the teachers have already been working on this and uh, been meeting they've been doing this for a while but I think th they're that all of their interest in this is accelerating and I know that there's a number of uh, uh, trips planned to other schools to look at schools I know that pl that planning is going on right now so they'll they'll be well positioned for when we we have an educational facilitator come in next year to do these intensive um, conversations to be ready to go. I think people had an idea what that was like in a, in a mini version when we did that with the Gibbs. But we will have more of that next year, which I think in some ways better. I was concerned of this, could we get this owner's, pro the designer and everything done by June, but by June, you know, the energy isn't quite there for it. I think having it in the early fall would be good. So I think we're moving along. That's great. And the the other thing is that we, as you know, we. And and, and not just Arlington, but lots of schools are are testing for lead in their water. Mm -hmm. And last spring, we already I already reported that out to everyone. We did test um, the water. It's it's not every faucet, but it's a it's a it's a sample size that is recommended at all of the elementary and Odison, and we found levels well below a any action uh, which says that the first of all the water is fine it's coming into people's homes what's the issue is you know what the age of the pipes are mm -hmm. and what condition they're in because the age isn't even necessarily the issue because that you can get these uh, linings that uh, protect the water so at any rate we began the process toward the very end of june of starting to get samples from the high school you have to test when the school's in session and then, then we were able to get some of that through MWRA, and then we got the grant, and, uh, and then we were able to do more testing in the fall, and we just got the results. So it's, um, you know, we put this out right away, and, but even during the fall, when we knew we were doing the testing, mm -hmm. we decided, not, not really quite knowing exactly what was going to be the findings, to start putting some reverse osmosis systems in we have one in the preschool, the nurse's office, and um, daycare. And uh, I think we're going to think about some other ones as well. But right, right now, the situation is that we, we had five, five fixtures that um, had actionable le levels. So if you're over 15 parts per billion, and uh, some were just a little bit over, and then there was one sink that was was considerably over but the interesting thing about that particular <coughs> sink is that after in the 30 second flush the draw they do two drawings as soon as they turn the faucet on and then after 30 seconds there was nothing in this in the third one so what what actually happens in the high school is that uh, people like to have colder water so they end up letting the water run anyway to get it to be cold but that that's our advice right now while we're, we're going into the next phase of testing is just let the water run for 30 seconds Mm. And um, but anyway, it's we're mo we're moving on it. We're doing what we can do. All of those fixtures are being repla have been replaced, so um, we'll just keep the testing going. Mm -hmm. Dr. Allison, okay. Um, was this a sample, or were all all fixtures tested in the high school? Twenty eight in total. So not all. not all. Not all. So given that we were finding positives in that 28, are we going to go back and test all yes. of them? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're going to retest the ones we replaced just mm -hmm. to make sure it's fine. Right. Um, 
And then we're testing the other ones as well. And then we're going to start a, a new batch okay. as well. So we'll keep rolling through until we've tested everything. All right. And then when we find one, we replace the fixture. Right. right. Mm -hmm. OK. Thank you. And that's it. That's it. OK. Any other building updates? Uh, building updates. Um, well, uh, Thompson is moving along. On, uh, they just had I just asked permission today. They could work on Monday, on the holiday, just to keep keep it going. Um, we have we're moving forward with Hardy, and think in in the cons I, we're going to be moving forward in terms of moving to to have the construction of uh, town meeting to support the addition of six classrooms. But part of that will also be looking at how we're going to handle cafeteria core space as we go forward. And we've had some estimates, and um, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what's the best solution is going to be, but, but we'll, it'll be part of, it will be part of the project. Mm -hmm. Gibbs okay. is humming along. Mm -hmm. We will have our first uh, Gibbs advisory meeting um, coming up. It will be actually right before this meeting. I got to get um, that out. To the the Gibbs advisory, right? Okay. We have the new. We have all the teachers. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have a very big advisory group. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna meet in here. Okay. Um, and so we have an agenda. So that, I'm gonna get. I gotta get that out now that we have the teachers. And, and, and I'm sure that people will be able. Not everybody will be able to come, but I think we'll have a good group. And I know I was asked about the Audison Principal um, Search Committee, if that was when that was going to be formed. It, it, well, let me let you two speak <laughs> yeah, about okay. that. Scott, so it is basically formed. I mean, we've asked the, the union, the AEA, conducted an election of their members at, at Audison, and they've selected four members who are going to be on the committee. We have a couple um, AAA administrators. Mm -hmm. Um, Dr. Cheston and myself will be there, and we're going to look for a parent or two, two parents. Two parents. We're going to contact OPEC. OK, right. and there was talk about fifth grade parents as well at one point. Is that? That would be for Gibbs. Gibbs. Oh, that's for, no, no, for Otterson. Was, was, for Otterson. Oh. Well. No, no. Was it for Gibbs? Oh, maybe it was. Uh, definitely for Gibbs. I may be, I may be we mistaken. Were, okay. Just like we go for yeah. the representatives on the selection committee, I thought, you know, probably the easiest thing to do would be to have OPEC. Yeah, OK. Do okay. it. Um, okay. So this is a standard type of committee where we have members of the teachers yep. who were selected yep. by the union, members of the administrators um, mm -hmm. who would participate, um, some parents, yeah. some central office administrators. I mean, that's really. Okay. That's and the, like, our interviewing, we're, right now we're tentatively scheduling the first round of interviews on March 8th. So okay. we've, mm. we're. So you need to get the parents oh. together soon. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. We do. Yes, Mr. Slickman. And uh, consequently, the uh, CFO search? Uh, we are still um, collecting applications. We have not scheduled the uh, first set of interviews yet. We will hopefully do that soon after break um, and would put together. There are several people I know who, w who have requested to be on the committee um, from 6-4 or, or um, and the town side too. And town side too, our grants. Town controller, deputy town manager, um, um, Julie. Probably a director of facilities. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we want to have this be uh, a broad spectrum of people um, that are going to be working with the CFO. Mm -hmm. Was going to be. Uh, oh, and we have uh, Dr. Allison Ampey from the. Was going to be representative from budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we're getting a reasonable flow of applicants. I, we're getting some applicants. I'm not sure. Um, we have several. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did we have a deadline for the? Or is it I think it was. It, it was. It was pretty open in the poster. Relatively. I think I originally in school spring it was the end of February, but it can always be extended yeah. if we need yeah. to mm -hmm. try to keep it out mm -hmm. for a while. Okay. Good. When you go through the applications and stuff. It, do people sometimes apply and not meet the criteria? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think for any position we have, people, that happens. That's that happens. true of every um, position yeah. we have. Yeah. Do you, I'm, I'm just we curious. We sort of you, screen them out, oh, okay. usually. That makes we, sense. Would, we, we let them know that they're. <laughs> <laughs> this position, people need to know, this, uh, of a CFO of a school system has to be certified right. with mm. Department of Education. Right. So that, that in itself is one of the, mm. the big screens right, right. away. 
And you know, one would say, well, could they be certif could they be certifiable? But the, the, you can't begin phrase. the position without being certified. Right. It, it depending on where they are in the licensure process, if they're very close and they could have a license by July one of two thousand seventeen, that would be okay. It's like a teacher, as long as they have it by the first day yeah. of school. Right. Just have it, then they don't have much experience. Right. Well, it's <laughs> well, they might not have much experience in a public school system. Exactly. They may have other budget experience, other CFO like type of experience, right. maybe other municipal experience. Um, it's possible without that license. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just get some subject to the wonderful evaluation process. Okay. Um, subcommittee and liaison reports. Budget. Um, so. Budget is going to meet hopefully sometime between now and March 2nd, mm -hmm. um, depending on availability of our subcommittee members. Okay. Um, and also, we've been scheduling budget outreach. Um, Mr. Schlickman attend, uh, conducted one um, last week mm -hmm. on the 8th uh, at was it Hardy? No, at uh, oh. Bishop. Oh, Bishop, sorry. Um, and we have multiple other ones being scheduled in the process of being scheduled mm -hmm. and we're going to be sending out an uh, announcement i'll probably ask for it to be sent out tomorrow and then again after vacation mm -hmm. so people can put them on the calendars but we've got one scheduled for stratton thompson bishop audison and now bracket just came in and wants one too so so what kind of questions are you getting or what kind of comments we went through the uh, powerpoint and yeah it, it was basically what are the choices? Can we get a copy of the PowerPoint? Can we see the graphs? Uh, you know, how are we, fu you know, I, I, I spent a bit of time talking about how we're funded and why we have to make tough decisions. Uh, uh, they, they seem to enjoy it. Um, they, they, you know, they said it was the highlight of the meeting, so I guess, you know. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you, many people. I, I didn't want to go and, uh, <laughs> in, in bog down their meeting, but they, 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 they were very happy um, to, to be able to have the conversation and to ask questions. That's great. About process in the town. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. <coughs> um, oh, community relations? Um, so community relations, both of its meetings were canceled <laughs> due to snow. Due to snow, yep. Um, and so both of them have now been combined and are moved to Monday the 27th from 5 to 7 here. Um, we are going to discuss buffer zones, appointment to the Human Rights Commission, and the parent forum on March 9th. Um, what time? 5 Thank you. to 7. Well, yeah, well, yeah, it's a long it meeting. was it's two, two meetings. meetings. Right. Mm -hmm. It was two meetings for that reason. Um, um, the only other thing is I wondered how did the school committee chat go on uh, February? F oh, yes, oh. right. We should yeah, we had, we had, uh, Kersey and I had a good time for about 15 minutes talking to each other. Uh, uh, town meeting stuff. About so. town yeah. meeting and uh, good. presidential <laughs> issues and uh, the, the price of uh, coffee and... Uh, the fact that they were donating coffee revenue to the ACLU, lots of good things. Why, you know. and, and then about uh, 11.50, we had about six people show up, and we ended up uh, chatting till almost 12.30. Wow. Um, and they were asking a, a bunch of interesting questions. Um, some were really school-based questions, and others were really town issues that in other forms of governance would have been under our domain like for example uh, why did we why did we sell the uh, Crosby school right. for two million dollars and it was like well uh, <laughs> it's not ours <laughs> um, you know that's that's a town decision town you know town manager town meeting but uh, you, know, you want to preserve the open space and uh, maintain the, the, the function of that building rather than have it torn down and develop into housing so uh, there's a preservation issue there uh, that was part of the thinking but again stating firmly that you know we accessed that school many many years ago uh, and it was under the control of the uh, the town uh, and disposition was made by town meeting uh, but you know really thoughtful things about the uh, additional classrooms, about the rebuilds. Uh, we talked about high school and 
What else do we talk about? Hmm? Conferences. Oh, parent the, conferences. The parent yes. Conferences. Yeah, uh, timing of, of parent conferences. That was the length of them. Yeah. Oh, that they're very short. Especially at the the Audison was right, right, right. Described as speed dating. It is like yes. speed dating. Mm. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, and whether there's any way of. I still haven't of figured increasing. out a good way. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. We have a lot of kids is a problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're do you guys have notes that you've? We're gonna send them in. Okay, great. Mm. So we'll put that in the minutes for next time. Great. Cool. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Okay. Um, so we can. I mean, we're talking about how we're gonna publicize this. Um, we've been putting on the Arlington list the paper, um, but we can certainly publicize this as a regular, even though it's not officially a meeting. I mean, we might as well. I mean, that, I think we should post, the more we it, post, post it. Yeah, the more we post it, the, yeah, I think we should do that yeah. in the future. Mm -hmm. So you have the dates, is that? It's the first Saturday of every month, yeah, but I can Saturday remember to send you an email, mm -hmm. Karen, as well, when I do my, hey, Kathy, can you send out a parent email? Hey, mm -hmm. Jennifer, can you yeah, post exactly. this? Like, hey, right. hey, advocate, right. can you mm -hmm. put this in your paper? And then at the end of this year, we'll make it, we'll discuss about whether we want to continue this, because this was sort of a trial thing. So, yeah. yeah. Do we, do we know, have you made a schedule for the rest of the months, or? Yes. Mm -hmm. who's, on, who's up next? It's a good that question. Might be, I might just post it with one. Oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, that, that sounds good. good. That sounds good. All right. And so I wouldn't fine. put the people because we. Um, February 4th. Uh, yeah, it could change. Yeah. So We're March allowing. 4th is um, right now Bill and Len. Oh, good. Good to know. You, you, we wanted, you wanted to switch dates with me, and so we yeah. switched. You switched I took April. Your, okay, that's right. I took your other one, so. So March 4th? So March 4th. April 1st, I believe, is. March 4th will be the next one? Yeah, March 4th, April 1st, mm -hmm. May 6th, and June 3rd. There we have it. Good. April 1st is election day. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Do you want to do it on election day? Yeah. I, there's uh, not yeah. much to get to. There's not going to be a big crowd at the polls, I'm sure. <laughs> so are, are the, are, is it closed? No. There's it's nobody, closed and nobody running against us. And nobody's any, running against any, any, any of these wow. meetings. Like only four or five. Wow, Some that of the town is meeting awesome. positions are, are hardly contested. So oh, I'm, that's really precincts. great. That's really good to hear. We, we should also make sure that we touch base with the owner of Kickstand. This is a very busy time in the, in, yes. in, in, in the store. Uh, we had trouble getting a table uh, to begin with, and the owner came by and said, you know, we, we love having you here, but, you know, let, let's get this on the calendar and let, let's work around her okay. needs Good. as well. Okay, so we should talk to them. We, okay. we don't want to be costing her Absolutely. Right. business or money. You know, we right. don't want to be enhancing it and bringing people in. Right, right, right. We They're bought lots generous. of coffee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And presumably some people are showing up just to see you guys, and so, you know, they're yeah. buying things. So, But, yeah, we should talk to them. Yeah, I was okay. highly caffeinated by the time we got done. Yeah. Excellent. So you didn't well, I'm there you, one, at least once a week, so maybe I'll... <laughs> you, talk, you talked a little bit more than usual? Uh, yeah, I mean, at 10 o'clock I wasn't highly caffeinated, but by the time... Or 11 o'clock I wasn't highly caffeinated, but by 12.30 I was. Mm. <laughs> anyway. Mm -hmm. um, right. Does anyone want to speak to facilities? Uh, does any, nobody does wants to talk about district accountability curriculum. And okay. Uh, oh, district accountability. Does anyone? Yes, district accountability. Sorry. I, that's we you. received no feedback uh, of uh, modifications from the last meeting, so I guess we're moving forward there. We, we don't have plans for another meeting, but I think we'll probably end up scheduling one after vacation. Okay. And I know we still have it on the agenda to talk about um, the superintendent goals. Mm -hmm. That was we were supposed to talk about last time. Right. Um, uh, Ms. Jeff, Mr. Thielman asked that we defer that decision discussion until mm -hmm. he was able to be at a meeting, and so okay. we're going to push it to the mm -hmm. next one. Did I misunderstand part of the thing? I thought the chair of uh, Paul was going to start the start a procedure with Kathy. Are we going to dis do the discussion first? That's um, for you mean for the next year. The next one. Yeah, that but, will that that will have to happen. Um, Whoever is chair of that committee. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's a, it's the okay. next chair. Okay, I mean, so we're, gonna, we're going to defer. My only concern is that it goes farther and farther, and yes. it, basically we, the time we were behind the times last time, and we well, should try to get. But the time officially starts from the end of the last evaluation, which is November. We're already yep. three months into it. Yep. Now we're talking five months into it. Yep. So we it's, should get this gonna all be, done by it, June. It, it, it's going to be awful hard for Doctor Boy. Yep. Yep. For what? Well, I mean, if the goals for the upcoming, the next year, will be halfway through the year. We want, we want to try to get on the schedule that, yes. we, that they're established by June. That's all. Yeah, because the yeah. goals for yeah. next year are established. Yeah, so whoever is the chair of that committee has together. to be in charge of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's on first? 
<laughs> okay. Okay, so facilities, facilities. nothing, uh, policy and procedures. We're waiting for Mike Gilbert from uh, MASC to contact uh, Karen to start the procedure of updating our policy book. I will be connecting with him to have him come out and explain the procedure uh, and the subcommittee's role in this procedure going forward. Okay, uh, and you got the, I know there was an email from Mr. Gilbert right. about materials he's already, that he He's needed. already connected, but he's gotten it. The, okay. the, he hasn't said a date yet, has he? No, to he get, the, to get everything together. Okay. But he's coming out to talk to you. It has to be hard to mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, and we do not, have, we ended up canceling a meeting for today right. because we really weren't ready to go forward. So, and we do not have one scheduled as yet. Once I contact Mr. Gilbert, for him to come out and talk to us, I'll set up a doodle with the subcommittee. I mean, there were several other things on policy and procedures. Were there? Part, one of it was uh, getting it clear where we are on the uh, student activity fee. Right. Uh, and then the superintendent, the evaluation we wanted to. Right, but that's all system. interconnected with Actually, the goals so and stuff know. like that. So, I mean. Okay. Okay. Um, school enrollment task force. Is there anybody who wants to um, So, the only, I mean, we had a meeting, and the outcome of that meeting was that we agreed that we should include the cafeteria redo as part of redoing hardy right um we talked about three um there were kind of three kind of first goes at what that might look like but we kind of sent them all back to the drawing board and said we'd like to see some other layouts and and things so we didn't really you know agree that any of those were necessarily good but that we really did have to fix the size of the cafeteria in some way mm -hmm. um, and that that should be rolled into the right but we may not have the budget project. we right. we also had uh, Miss D Francisco uh, who's the principal there we asked her a lot of questions because she's the one that's gonna have to live with it right. and she was very responsive mm -hmm. so I'd commend her to the superintendent um, okay, so legal services review. Have Nothing at this time. That? Okay. Um, Gibbs committee, so we know we're having a meeting. You're on the Gibbs committee, the meeting, right? Is that? I have not heard of any meetings Okay, so yet. I guess, so. We are having a Gibbs advisory meeting? Yes. Yes. So Ms. Starks needs to be on that list because she is the school committee representation. Oh, good. On the <laughs> Gibbs, yes. That's what we, we discussed March, that last time. March 2nd. Yes. March 2nd. That at Thursday. Can that work? Can that, can you get there Reason so early? Uh, I can certainly try. I will have to swap my after school, but I will, can see if I can do that. Okay. Um, warrant right. committee. Everybody get paid. Second. Other leads on reports? Yes, Mr. Hanna? Uh Dr. Allison, Ampey, and I went to the EDCO meeting. There was no meeting because we were the only two that showed up. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. I, it, it was, it was uh, it had snowed and it, no, it the roads were a little. Oh, it's the ice day. But, oh, okay. but Dr. Ampey and I trudged out. We, we got there. Were there snacks at least? Or? <laughs> yeah, we got the snacks. Okay, good. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, announcements, Mr. Hainer. I have two. Um, I asked Karen to send out a notice to the rest of the committee. Uh, Metco Lobby Day will be March 4th, 14th, excuse me. 9 a.m. we'll gather in the uh, nurses hall and at 1045, uh, we'll be going to uh, speak to our uh, representatives talking about increased funding and, and getting Boston to pay a better share. Mm. Uh, they, get a, they literally make they money benefit. on yeah. us. And the other thing, uh, the polar plunge was a success with over $55,000 raised. Um, it cost 60 cents for one polio inoculation, so that translates into, just from this district alone for Rotary is 91,000 inoculations. Three members from the Arlington Rotary uh, plunged, and we uh, earned over $1,500. That money's matched with, by the Bill and Melissa Gates uh, Foundation. And for those that care, the wind chill was 29 degrees. <laughs> Up 14 from last year, but it really didn't, <laughs> didn't matter. It didn't help. But it was, it was a fun time good. for good cause. And future agenda items. Yes, Mr. Hamer. Uh, I would uh, ask that uh, the board discuss Article 19, which is the appointment of the town treasurer. Uh, that alone is not directly related to us, but it may be tied. Uh, we need to do a little bit more investigation. I'll be happy to mm -hmm. do it to see if it's related to the DOI report. If it is, that does have impact on us. So uh, 
I will bring that back for the next meeting to see if it does, if it's just the town treasurer, it doesn't impact us directly and uh, I'll withdraw that. But it's article 19 for the town meeting. All right. I, I mean, my understanding is it doesn't directly yet. Right. You know, there's but, might be talk, but there's not. That particular article doesn't yet affect well, us. Well, we don't, don't know yeah. where the article's leading. We'd like yeah. to see some language uh, that would be the vote under the article. Right, right. And right. see what the long range plan would be if the article's adopted. Right, so. right, right, right. Okay. Great. Um, anything else? That's it. Okay, to, so to, motion, motion to, to adjourn, adjourn by Mr. S Ms. Stark, seconded by Mr. Hainer. All in favor? Aye. Oh, I'm sorry. We don't need executive no. session. No. Okay. No, we don't need executive session. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Great. Thank you.